A off the stack and throw it away. And then I will read a symbol representing what that A generated in order for me to throw it away. Does everybody see the connection between the generating and the accepting? You're just turning this generation into a machine which is looking at the symbols that haven't been substituted for yet, put them on a stack, and then substitute for them one by one. If they actually generate a terminal symbol, you throw them away and you read a symbol on the tape. If they simply turn into two other symbols, you stay where you are on the tape, pop it off, put two new symbols on. So, if there is a 1 on the tape, and you have an A on the stack, you can pop it. Those three loops represent what you can do if there's an A on the stack. What else do we have to put on this big fat state? We'll call this the processing state, or the parsing state. All this is doing is parsing. It does just more or less what Yak does, except it doesn't know what the heck it should do at every stage. And Yak does, because it uses a better grammar. What do you got to do for B? Right? Right? Pop B, push A, push A. And the other possibility is, if there's a zero on the tape and a B on the stack, pop it. And then C, can you guys fill in C yourselves? Okay. Pop C, push C, push B. And if there's a one or a zero and there's a C on the stack, you can pop it. You can fill in the rest. There's only one more state because at some point we have to decide whether we accept a string that has gone through this long processing. So at some, top, some point we leave. How do we know we're ready to accept it? You're ready to accept something if what happens? The last symbol's red, R-E-A-D. The last symbol is red, and the stack is empty. So the last symbol is red means there's nothing left. The stack is empty means there's a Z back on the stack again. We filled it up with stuff. We knocked it all down. Leave it alone. And accept. Now, there's no way the stack can ever get empty before. You know, the stack can't get empty and then grow again in a Chomsky normal form grammar. Because of the way it's set up, there's no other non-terminals to, to possibly substitute for. They're sitting there on the end. So either you succeeded here or you didn't. And if you didn't, it means you made wrong choices along the way. All right. That's it. Are there, are there questions about this conversion? This conversion can be done with any Chomsky normal form grammar. This is just an example. It could be done just as generally with any other thing we started with. Yeah, Mike. How does a first state and a last state how do you have an E? How do you, have, you come in with an empty on anything and an empty stack. You go. So if I just had one and processed the, if I had that string and I just processed the one, why don't I go to the end? Why haven't you haven't taken up the one? I could. Wait, you're saying what if there's just the one? Is that what you're asking, no, Michael? Like that string. The okay. One zero one one zero. So so you go here and you throw an A on the stack, mm -hmm. and then you've read the one and popped it off. And now you say, I don't want to read any more symbols. The stack's empty. I'm going out here. But, but there's still more symbols to read. So when the machine tries to read the next symbol, it goes to some dead state. It's just like all those other machines. You've got to nail it down right here. And the implication is that any other movement in the machine will crash. So at this point, if there's nothing left, then you're safe. But if there's anything left, then you're, then you're in trouble. Make sense? Your brother asked a question like that the other day, very similar. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what a face he's making. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, uh, questions about this? All right, everybody's good? All right, this, consider this topic done. That's application number one of the Chomsky normal form and equivalence of context-free grammars and non-deterministic machines. We're going to move on. All right, I'll stop bothering you. No, no. You ain't bothering me. No. Oh, I don't like this green. There, dustless white. Another Chomsky normal form grammar. All right. Pumping lemma revisited. For finite state machines, we have this one tool that allowed us not to have to bring in the heavy guns of diagonalization to show that there was a set that was outside of the machines we were dealing with. The tool was called the pumping lemma. And it basically said, look, if you got long enough strings and they're supposed to be accepted by your machine, the strings will have loops in them in the computation, and therefore parts of the string can be pumped out, and you have to accept all of those too. And there's lots of sets that don't abide by that property. That you can show that no matter how the person splits them up, there are loops that if you pump them out enough, give you strings that are not in the set. And that's how we use the pumping lemma for finite state machines. And it was useful to show that certain sets were not regular. But here, if you try to do a pumping lemma for non-deterministic pushdown machines, something happens that's wrong. And let's think about that. If I have, say, some long string in a pushdown machine, like in that one I put up on the board before that had, that had three states in it, that one. Say I run through a string that has you know, nine symbols in it. I'm definitely going to have a loop in that machine. How come, let's say the loop was 0, 1, 0. And before it was 1, 1, and after it, it was 0, 1. How come I don't necessarily accept things like this? In a finite state machine, if I had a loop on 0, 1, 0, I would also accept this. Because when I came up to the next 0, 1, 0, I would do the same thing and end up where I was, and then continue on. How come, how come in a pushdown machine, this doesn't necessarily happen, and we're out of luck then? Because it also depends on what's on the stack. The first 0, 1, 0 might have changed the stack, might have put special symbols on it. And then when we came up to the same state, even though we're in the same state, there's different things on the stack, so we might not end up going in the same sequence of states at all. We might go somewhere completely different. So we've got this other thing that our decisions depend on, and therefore we can't pin down any kind of a loop in the computation just because we know that we got back to the same finite state. We would need somehow to know that we got back to the same finite state and the same situation on the, on the stack. And that is a tall order, which we won't be able to do. We'll do something kind of like it, but nothing, nothing exactly that good. So basically, this, this idea, look, whenever you come up with anything in, in computer science in this area, you always want to take what you know how to do and milk it for whatever you can. So you take the pumping lemma, which we kind of understand, and we go with it, and we realize this is a problem because the stack might send us in a different direction, and this actually kills this idea. It's like shoots it dead. You could try to fix that idea, but you'll try a long time and not get very far. We need a better way. So ironically, the way to find a pumping lemma in this level is not to look at the machine. The way to find the pumping lemma in this level is to look at the grammar. Now, I might have shown this to you with the grammar for finite state machines too, but that would have seemed really artificial since the loop just screams out in the machine and it doesn't quite scream out in the grammar. But here there is no loop in the machine and there is one in the grammar. How do you get loops in grammars? I'll show you in a second. All right, so that's intro. We're going to do a pumping lemma to show that certain sets are not context-free grammars and we're going to do it by looking at the grammars and the parse trees from those grammars. Questions so far? All right, yeah, Donna. Does this have like another name besides 
No, it's called the pumping lemma for context-free grammars. There's the pumping lemma for finite state machine, and there's the pumping lemma for context-free grammars. And actually, there's, there's lots of 